Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Codeboard. In this video, we are going to see how to sort an array using a simple technique called bubble sort. For those who don't know, first let me explain what sorting is. So basically, sorting is reordering an array in ascending or descending order. So ascending order means smallest element will come first and go up to the greatest element. For example, if we have an array with elements 6, 4, 7, 1 and 9, the output should be 1, 4, 6, 7, 9. We have the smallest element first, then the next element up to the greatest element. So in this way, we are going to sort the array in Java. Now let's see how bubble sorting works. So in bubble sort, we compare each element with the adjacent element. And if the first element is greater than the next element, we'll swap it if we want the output in ascending order. So we are going to compare the adjacent elements and if the first element is greater, we'll swap it. Let's understand this clearly with an example. So our array is 6, 4, 7, 1, 9, right? Now we are going to have the first round of bubble sort. Let's understand how it is going to work. So in the first round, adjacent elements are going to be compared. So first 6 and 4 will be compared. Now we want our output in ascending order. And since 6 is greater than 4, these elements will be swapped. So first pass of the first round, the output is going to be 4, 6, 7, 1, 9. Next two elements will be compared. So 6 and 7 will be compared. 7 is already greater than 6. So it is at the right position in these two elements. So no swapping is going to happen. In the next round, 7 and 1 will be compared. Now 1 is smaller than 7. So we are going to swap these two elements. And the array will be 4, 6, 1, 7, 9. In the last pass of the first round, 7 and 9 will be compared. Since 7 is already less than 9, no swapping is going to happen. So we have reached the end of the array. So at the end of first round, we have 4, 6, 1, 7, 9. Right? Now again, we need to perform one more round because our array is still not sorted. So we are going for second round. Again, we'll start from the 0th index. We'll compare 4 and 6. They are in position. So 4 is less than 6. So no swapping. Then we'll compare 6 and 1. Now 1 is less than 6, so here we are going to swap the elements. Next step, we are going to compare 6 and 7. They are in place, so no swapping. And then 7 and 9 again. Again they are in place, so no swapping. So we have again reached the end of the array. But still the array is not completely sorted. So now, in the last round, like this probably has to be last round because almost our array is sorted. So in the next round, 4 and 1 will be compared. 1 is less than 4. So here we are going to swap 1 and 4. And then the next elements will be compared. Now if you check the adjacent elements in the next passes, they are already in place. So we don't need to swap them. So finally, at the end of third round, our sorted array is going to be 1, 4, 6, 7, 9. Ideally, max to max number of swaps that are needed is going to be up to length of the array. So in five rounds, the array should be sorted anyhow for this particular five elements. So here can you observe one thing that the greatest element is bubbled up in every pass. So as you can see, seven was shifted to end because it is like the nine is already the greatest element. It is at the end. After that, seven is the element. In the first round itself, seven was in its position. So in each round or each pass, we usually get the greatest element bubbled up. So the greatest elements or the greater elements are going to be in place in the passes. That is why each time we do not need to iterate the array till the end. To understand this more clearly, let's first roughly write down our logic. So we need a for loop to iterate the array because we are going to compare the adjacent elements. So the first for loop is going to go from i equal to 0 to i less than array dot length. Let's call our input array a. So it's going to go from i equal to 0 to a dot length. That's the maximum point up to which we iterate the array. And i plus plus. Inside this, we are going to check two adjacent elements. So if a of i is greater than a of i plus 1, that is the two adjacent elements are being checked here. 
if it is greater we are going to write the swapping logic for swapping logic we are going to use a temp variable so a of i will store in a temp variable then a of i plus 1 in will shift in a of i and in a of i plus 1 will shift the value of temp element a simple swapping logic if you want to understand more details of swapping logic you can check the video mentioned in the description box below and you can also see, see the link up here so you can check that video for swapping logic got it so we have a loop inside which we have a condition to check that json elements and if the first element is greater than the next element we are going to swap the elements right now this will do for one pass okay but here we have a problem since we are checking a of i plus 1 and if we go up to a dot length a of i plus 1 is going to be inaccessible for the last index we'll get array out of bound in exception so we have to iterate this till a dot length minus 1 because obviously a of length minus 1 then a dot length like the last element is going to check with the help of a of i plus 1 so this loop should go till a dot length minus 1 now to this now this is going to be one round right in one round we are checking the adjacent elements but we have to keep on doing the rounds until we get the sorted array so we'll have one more outer loop okay so this outer loop is for the rounds okay the first loop inner loop was for one round inside which we are checking adjacent elements the outer loop is going to be for multiple rounds that we need to perform because we need to sort the array until we get the final sorted array right so the outer loop will go from let's say n equal to 0 to n less than a dot length now a dot length is the maximum rounds that we are going to need to actually sort the complete array in five rounds it is sure that the array is going to be sorted we don't need more rounds so it will go from n equal to 0 to n less than a dot length up to n plus plus so we have this outer loop right but in our case in three round itself the array was sorted so should we go for a dot length like up to a dot length no right we don't need two extra rounds to be performed that is going to be wastage of time so for that we need to take one flag this flag will check if at least one swap is happening if not a single swap is happening that means our array is already sorted and we need to stop here so we'll take one flag in flag let's call this equal to zero and if this condition is accessed like if that is if one swap has happened then we'll make flag equal to one so at least if one swap is happening flag is going to change to one so in this loop like after this loop we'll write if flag still is zero like flag value has never changed to one that means no swapping has happened that is the array is already sorted so if flag equal to zero we are going to break the loop simply and the program will come out of the sorting logic right so in this way our logic is going to work one more thing we can improve here the inner loop can be modified so it can go only up to a dot length minus n minus one so as i said earlier the greater element is always going to bubble up so every time you do not need to go up to last element because in each pass like we usually will have the greatest element bubbled up so you only need to go up to a dot length minus n minus 1 you can try this logic for various elements and check for yourself how this is going to work you can actually debug and check how this is going to work so let's implement this logic in our code first so we'll take one input array let's call this a and i'm going to give predefined elements into this you can also take this as user input but we are going to give predefined elements so 6 4 7 1 and 9 after this we'll write our first for loop which, which will go from n equal to 0 to n less than a dot length and n plus plus inside this we'll have our second loop to check the adjacent elements so for int i equal to 0 to i less than a dot length minus n minus 1 because we are not going to go up to end because already we are going to have greater elements at the end and i plus plus inside this we'll write a condition if a of i is greater than a of i plus 1 if it is greater 
let's write the logic for swapping the elements so we'll take a variable temp temp will have the value of a of i a of i will get the value of a of i plus 1 and a of i plus 1 will have value of temp so in using a third variable we have swapped elements one more thing that is remaining is a flag that will check if the array is sorted so we are going to have a flag here int flag equal to 0 and if at least one swap has happened, the flag value will change to 1. And if flag remains 0, that is its value has not changed, that is no swapping has happened, we are going to break the loop. And it will stop performing the rounds for sorting. Right? So this is our logic. Now let's run our program and check our output. For that, we also need to print the array. So let's print the output array. So I'm going to use a loop and simply print. So this is our loop and using sys out, we don't need print ln. We are going to say a of i and separate it with a space. Now let's run this program. So here our output has the sorted array. You can also try this for multiple inputs and check for yourself. One thing I would suggest you to do is debug this and check step by step how the array is going to get sorted. And I'm sure you deeply understand the logic of bubble sort. So I hope this program was easy to understand for you. In the next or the upcoming videos, we are going to see the next types of sorts. So stay tuned and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any doubts or need more clarification, mention that in the comment section below and we'll get back to you shortly. Until then, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.